Well, I did it. I got a physical copy of The World Ahead, 2025 by The Economist. The cover here looks very different from what we expected online, so I hope there's not going to be another version. Although I just checked out some of the articles here. look like the articles that I've read about it online. So hopefully this is it, but I will let you in the next few weeks as I read through this magazine and give you all the great deep dive that you like because every year one of your favorite car casts is this summary of The World Ahead by The Economist. I did this a long time ago in 2018. I did in 2019, and the year after that, and the year after that, and the year after that, and the year after that. As you can tell, I've been doing it for uh, quite a while uh, so far. So this year is going to be no exception. I will be doing a deep dive. Today, I'm going to talk about a few themes because, like I said, I've read it online. But if you want to get the full version, subscribe to the newsletter down here. This is something new I started because I ran out of limits uh, with LinkedIn. So this is the best way that we can stay in touch. This year on the CarCast, we develop a lot of tools to make your work as a data AI and analytics executive really a lot easier. Uh, we did the user guide for humans, which is great for leaders to decode how they work. It was a big hit this year. We developed a spreadsheet that has some of the most compelling stats in data and AI, so you can use them in your research and your presentations with your team. And we also launched the data salary service so you can benchmark yourself against your peers. I was just reading in the Menlo Ventures prediction deck for 2025 that they're suggesting leaders should brace themselves for soaring competition on the salary. They expect a two to three X salary premium for enterprise architects, which should be pretty good for you. So if you have not gotten your hands on all these resources, simply click on the link down below here to get started and be a subscriber to newsletter, connect uh, with the community. Now, when it comes to this magazine in particular here, there are a few themes I think you should pay attention to. Now, of course, I just got the physical copy, but like I said, I've been reading it online. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've seen so far. The Economist calls 2025 the year of agentic AI. I think that's an easy trend to agree with. I would go one level deeper and say there's, in fact, a few more trends. The first one is, I think this year or next year, 2025, is going to be the year where companies will start to scale Gen AI. And that's right, I said start to scale, because if you've been following me, you know that I'm not a believer that this is a trend that goes to from zero to 100 in one year. In my opinion, we're dealing with such transformative technology, it's going to be over a decade, just like the internet or the cloud. I also think we're going to mature our perspective to assistants and agents right now. Everybody's spinning one versus the next. But I think it's going to be more sophisticated than that. I think we'll discover that, in fact, it's about networks of models, networks of assistants, networks of agents. There will also be a continuum between assistants to agent. And there will also be this huge question of collaboration between agents and collaborations, agents to humans. So I think there's a lot more sophistication that's about to happen here, which will all be great. The biggest trend of all, I think, will be the multi-agent orchestration. My friend Eric Broda here, I know is working on the surprise for you that I can't wait for him to unveil. That is about this agentic mesh. The idea is that there's going to be hundreds, thousands of agents and assistants, and they will need to be customized. They will need to be operated. They will need to be managed. They will need to be debugged. And, and they're going to need to be administered. Now, The Economist points to the fact that 70% of OpenAI's revenue is from consumers. And from that, they infer that this must mean that there's a secret use of Gen AI, meaning there's employees using their consumer license of uh, Gen AI and working with data. And so really putting potentially your corporate data at risk. And so I think we'll talk a lot about how this multi-agent orchestration framework is not just about agents working together, together, but it's also how you protect your employees, your data, your organization as these agents are executing tasks. The Economist also states that we shouldn't expect productivity gains in 2025 from Gen AI. This one, I think, is a little bit more drastic and pessimistic than need to be. And I'm going to have to disagree with them. I've worked with a lot of customers already experienced a ton of value. So it's a tough, tough one to do. Now, on this uh, copy here in the front page, you don't see uh, Saturn. But one of you asked me on YouTube, what's the deal with Saturn in the online uh, front page of this magazine? And... The answer is really simple. In 2025, the Saturn rings will appear to disappear from March to November. Sounds strange, but in fact, it's something that happens every 29 years as Saturn tilts. Basically, the rings of Saturn, when they're edge on to the Earth, they're so thin 
that they vanish from sight. And so it's an optical trick, of course, and was first observed by Galileo in, 18, uh, in 1612. And so it's a great piece to read here in the magazine if you like history and if you like uh, science. I think it's a good reminder that everything in the universe changes. And I guess I could also say that it's a good reminder in our business that the only constant is change. So it's a great story on Saturn Reese. Thanks for asking for that. Now, finally, before I let you go, I want to draw your attention on another initiative that we are starting. We want to know which books you should read next? Which books should you read in 2025? And so what I've done here is something real simple. I've put together a list of 25 books for 2025 that you can vote on. It includes some of my favorites, my go-to reads, as well as some of the books that are coming in 2025 that I'm really excited about. Now, don't worry. I am not going to talk about books like that, French books that you might have heard of that make everybody laugh about French culture. This one is probably the most hilarious one. I'll give you a second to read it. Or even books like that about cooking. This is one of my favorite uh, new books by um, Stephen Colbert and his wife. All these books are about leadership, data, AI, and analytics. So it's really in our field. The link is down below here. So you can check out the list. Uh, if your pick is in there, you can add it. Uh, you can suggest your most anticipated books uh, you're looking for to in 2025. Survey takes less than three minutes to complete. It's a great thing to do as a community so we can learn from each other our favorite books. I will take all that data and summarize it for you and give you the answers in the new year. So go ahead, click on the link, and I will see you very, very soon.